Okay, peace and greetings. Goddess Queen Ja Ast here. And I'm going to be doing something that I never ever do on my um, Facebook, on my Facebook page. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing something that I never do on my Facebook page. I am actually going to go live on Instagram as well. So give thanks and praise. So I am setting that up right now as we are speaking. And I just want to welcome you. Give you a nice little welcome. And give you a nice little invitation to be patient with me while I get this set up. I got ring light going. Y'all, I am in production mode. Right now, I'm in production mode, which is really strange because um, my birthday is coming up. And usually during my birthday is when I start to go into relaxation mode. But maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. Look at us. We're already getting started in what I have learned. What I've learned from business after 12 years. I've been in business for not 12, 10. I've been in business for 10 years now. I've been a life coach, like actively and consciously a life coach for 10 years now. Okay, so I'm gonna be going live now on my Instagram. Okay, and if you don't yet follow me on Instagram, <laughs> if you don't yet follow me on Instagram, Instagram has filters, y'all. If you don't yet follow me on Instagram, I am Goddess Queen Ja Ost on Instagram. Goddess Queen Ja Ost on Instagram. Yo, Instagram really has some very cute filters. Like Facebook, where are you at? I got a rain filter. There's a snowfall filter. Like, hello. Hello. There's a, a shining star filter, so I feel like that's most appropriate for me, you know. But I ain't gonna, I ain't, I ain't gonna hold them. You know what I mean? I'm gonna do this one right here. Okay, so I'm going live on Instagram as well. All right, peace and greetings. So today we are talking, and we got a lot to talk about because we are simply going over lessons that I have learned. Over the last 10 years as a business owner, I have been in business exactly 10 official years this year. And um, there's just so many things that I've learned about business that that I, I don't believe I could have learned them from a book. Um, so that would be the first thing I've learned, one thing, one, really great thing that I've learned is that doing business is, it's very organic. It's about creating relationships and about assisting or serving or aiding the people who you are creating these relationships with. So the first thing that I've really learned is that with business, you have to learn from actually doing you have to learn from being in business. You have to learn from experiencing it versus just trying to learn from reading a book, taking a class, going to a workshop. That would be the first thing and that just popped out of somewhere. So give thanks. Um, so let me just give you a little introduction about who I am. If you're looking at my page or if you're seeing me for the very first time, bienvenido. <laughs> I am Goddess Queen. Ja Oz, Goddess Queen Jamila Osset, and I am a life coach. I am a speaker. I am the author of Goddess Awakening. I am a shamaness in the making. I am a curator. I am a catalyst. I am so many different things. I'm a mom. Um, and for the last 10 years, I have been a life coach. For the last 10 years, I have been assisting um, in the process of discovery, of learning more about self, learning more about who you are. Because that's what the biggest thing is like, you know, what is life about? You know, life is about happiness. Life is about learning. Life is about lesson. No, life is about knowing yourself. 
It's about knowing who you are. Knowing who you are so you can love you more abundantly. That's what this is all about. Knowing who you are and falling in love every single day with who you are. Like this, like I looking in the mirror and saying, I fuck with you, right? I fuck with you. You you are the best creation that God has has offered this earth. Getting up every morning with that love, with that acceptance and appreciation for who you are is a big part of the quote, know thyself, right? In all things knowing, know thyself. And I don't know who said that. I don't know if it was Socrates or Aristotle or some Egyptian comedic person who we that was borrowed from. But in all things knowing, know thyself. Know thyself. The more you know, the more you discover, the more you learn about you, the more you can love you, the more you can appreciate you, the more you can forgive you and talk to you nice, treat you nicely, be nice to yourself, right? So um, in, in knowing thyself, there are so many different layers of yourself and then the self is dynamic. So we're always changing. So sometimes in that process of trying to learn yourself, it can get exhausting. It can get long. It can become a, a distance journey, not a sprint. Um, and then you're changing. So now you thought you knew yourself last year, but this year you're a different self. There's just so many different pieces, right? There's so many different pieces. And so I, my role and my work has really been to, um, to assist as a guide in that process of knowing, to, to help to unravel some of the pieces um, of knowing, to help to, to be in direct relationship with, um, with you as you are going through the journey of learning you right? Um, sometimes in the learning journey, you can identify that there were lessons that came to you in the molding of you that no longer resonate with you, right? So they're no longer for you. There's things that you might have learned about yourself um, or, or been doing and not even realizing it. So when you learn about yourself, you're like, oh, wow, I was doing that. Oh, wow, I was thinking these thoughts. Oh, wow, I was of this belief system. Oh, I didn't even know that. And it's because you're on a self-discovery process. You're, you're learning yourself. You're learning yourself. And, you know, people think, oh, well, you know, I have to do this journey by myself. I have to be solo dolo. And I'm just going to be responding to people's comments and et cetera, even while I am doing this. Because I, baby, that's how I get down, okay? Um, so, yeah, there's, there's lots of times where people think to themselves, Oh, I already know. Oh, I don't need assistance. Oh, you know, I'm I'm good. I'm good. Um but in reality, like you're not. You're not good. You're not good. Like there are things that you you don't even see about yourself that are very prominent that it takes someone on the outside to be reflective of. Sometimes we need an outside opinion. Sometimes we need an objective eye. Sometimes we need people who don't know us to listen to us and talk to us and help us and be with us and be in alignment with us. Sometimes we, we aren't good and we can think we're good, but we're not good. So there's so much of this journey to self-discovery that involves acceptance um and a willingness to go deeper a willingness to dive further a willingness to to explore a willingness to evolve to say i've been this way and i'm ready to be better than i was before there's so much of that that's sitting in this journey and um oftentimes what it requires is just that commitment to to just discover, to just discover, to just see what's beneath my hood. If I'm a car, what's beneath my hood? If I'm a house, what's in my closet? If I'm a house, what's in my basement? What's in my attic? What's in my patio? Know thyself. Is that too much to ask for? 
Is it too much to ask for to ask for you to know yourself? Because it, it feels fair. It feels like a fair request. It feels like, you know, okay, yeah, I am me. No one else is me. And it would be important for me to get to know me. That, that feels like a fair request. But we miss that. And so much of my work has been in helping people who are ready to go deeper, who are ready to uncover, who are ready to discover, who are ready to, to know themselves. Helping them to, to start that process. Helping them to go further, helping them to dive deeper, helping, helping them to understand what are, what, are, what are they composed of? When you're getting to know yourself, what are you composed of? What are you made of? Who helped to make you? We have our parents, but then we also have other figures and other influencers, other people who've been prominent in our lives. So who else has contributed to the making of you? Who, had, who else has contributed to the seasoning, to the sauce, to the essence of who you are, to your belief systems, to your thought systems? That is what we are doing when we work with a life coach, when we do self-development work, when we, when we do self-study, when we do evolution work, when we do spiritual work, ultimately what we are doing is going deeper into the cave of ourselves. And I know I'm talking about business today. Like today I'm talking about the lessons that I have learned um, as a business coach for 10 years. And I thought I was gonna be talking about business lessons, but maybe that is the order of the day not to just put my focus on business lessons, but to really speak frankly about what I've learned over a 10 year period. What I've learned over a 10 year period, one of the biggest lessons, um, and, it, and it affects business too. It affects business too. The simple, the simple lesson of um, self-discovery. Because the type of business person that you will be is directly in correlation to the type of person that you are every single day. <laughs> so if you are the type of person who is easily irritated by people, then starting a bakery may not be in your best and highest interest. That's all I'm saying, you know. I'm not I'm not saying nothing nothing off the chain, nothing like that. But if you if you know, the make it make sense. This is the person that you are in business, this is the person that you are in life. It's the same person. <laughs> so if you're not good with money in real life, then it might be a challenge for you to do that in in business unless you're willing to grow. Growth is at the base of all of this, unless you're willing to grow. Whatever dream you have, so that would be the third thing. Whatever dream you have, you can achieve it as long as you're willing to put in the work necessary to go to go do that. That would be my third lesson. Oh, I'm doing so good counting these lessons, honey, because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, you know, and we're just having a conversation. Like, we're just talking about this because... You know, there's so many things that are constantly shifting and um, we're always looking at, you know, what we want and how can I get this and how can I do that? How can I become and et cetera. We're always kind of in a perpetual state of just ongoing energy. It's good to be reflective. And it's, it's such an honor to share with you, like, the lessons I've learned along the way. Like, and I'm sharing this too because I'm sharing it with myself. This is the first time I'm having this conversation. I've never even had this conversation with myself, right? So this is a another self-discovery moment, <laughs> right? And I, I'm, I'm honored to be offering it with you, to be sharing that with you. Um, this is probably the only live that I've had so far where I haven't had a full audience of people so it's actually making it a lot easier to be a lot more transparent when you feel like no one is watching. Ooh, wee. 
<laughs> would that be lesson number four? Like it's easier to be transparent um, in business when you're not so focused on who's watching, how many are watching, what are they saying, what are they blah, 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 blah. Like when you just accept, when you just accept and do and focus on what you're doing and not focus on the numbers and this and that, it's just a lot easier to be transparent. It's a lot easier to show up when you don't feel like everybody's watching. Right? Because in business, sometimes we can we can get a little cornered. We can get in a corner and start to babysit that corner. Like, ah, I'm just going to stay here in this little corner. It's safe in this corner. I don't have to worry about anybody in this corner. Nobody's going to make fun of me in this corner. Nobody's going to talk bad about my shoes in this corner. In this corner. And if you know that you're a corner babysitter and you're in business, it may be time for you to ask yourself, well, when have I felt like I don't need to be in the corner? Because I can... Okay, I'm going to try something here. I'm going to try something, y'all. Go ahead and wish me luck as I try this. Because I have my beautiful African fabric um, here on the couch. This is my fabric that came from Tanzania, East Africa, where I will be living. Oh my gosh, I, it's even overwhelming to think about this. Like I will be living there in a short month and a half or so. So yeah, so it's important to uh, think about when you didn't feel so cornered, right? When you felt like you could be out, open, frontal, seen, visible, hot. Like, when was that? Um, and for me, I don't feel, I you know, I generally don't feel cornered. But when I notice myself being smallest or not very visible, it's when I don't have my drip together, right? So first of all, let's start by saying I got drip for sale. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. I got drip for sale. Um... But when I am flourishing and dripping and in my full essence of my femininity, you know, I got all my my beads and cowrie shells and, um, you know, trinkets in my hair right now. I got on my my uh, my robe. I got on my dress like, you know, this is one of my favorite robes. I'm probably gonna have to get another kimono as soon as I get back to Tanzania because I have worn this one, baby. I have worn this one. You hear me? Um, <laughs> all over the world, okay? This was a, a beautiful piece to even have in, in, in Mexico, you know? Um, but it's part of my drip. And when I dress like this, when I dress up, when I um, have my tools, because that's a big part for me, having my tools, having my lip glosses or having my earrings, like just having my tools, when I have all my stuff, I feel better and I feel able to deal with, you know, gem pop, the population, the public, the paparazzi. I feel, I feel able. And not that anyone's chasing me or beating down my doors right now at this very moment, but they're coming, right? And um, part of me acknowledging that is me just acknowledging when I am ready to be frontal and when I am ready to do my thing and when I don't feel like being so visible, Okay, so that is something that's really, really, really important to acknowledge. When are you feeling yourself? When are you feeling yourself? Because when you are feeling yourself, you will deliver. You will show up and you will show out when you are feeling yourself. But when you are not feeling yourself, technically everything in the ether feels it. The people that you interact feel it. The people that you talk to feel it. All, all, all of the elements are going to be reflective of she's not feeling herself just simply because you're not feeling yourself, right? So it's really, really um, essential to identify that. And I would think that that would be like lesson number four, I think. Um, I don't know why the phone is ringing now, but let's move on. Uh, so yeah, so preparing yourself to be visible, preparing yourself for those those big things, that's a big lesson in business. Um, some of the business owners that I have met over the past 10 years who were just starting have had the most, the highest dreams, the biggest dreams, the biggest intentions, the the well wishes, the um, the desires, the all of these things. But those things are impossible 
without the consistency, without the showing up, without the feeling it, without the dedication. Like, it, re it requires a lot of energy to execute. You, you're going to need a lot of energy to execute. You're going to need a lot of energy to carry your dream forward from where you at to where you want to be. You, you need, you just, that's just what it is. You need a lot of energy in order to execute. So because you need a lot of energy in order to execute your vision and in order to execute these goals that you have that are magnificent goals, they just require a lot of energy, then you need to be in a position to, to do that long term because it takes time. So maybe that would be the next lesson, you know, after 10 years in business, big lesson. It takes time, especially to my, I'm, I'm really speaking to my new business owners and even my current business owners, because sometimes it's good to reflect over these things. Like we're not, we're not always thinking about the things that we think we're thinking about. Sometimes we're not even aware of our thoughts at all. So it's important to feed your brain the thoughts that you want to feed your brain, feed your brain the thoughts that you want in there, right? Even if you've been doing it for a long time. I'll never forget, this is something I talk about and I bring this up, I feel like I bring it up all the time, but I, I, I'm sure I don't. I remember when my son was really, really little, he's probably like two and a half, three years old, and he gotten in trouble for something, like it was something small, something minor, and I was just there making a big deal out of it. And he's looking at me and he's pouting. And finally he says, mom, I'm sorry. I don't, I didn't know that. Like, I'm just a kid. I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm still learning. That's what my baby said to me. I'm still learning, mom. He was like two and a half, almost three years old. And that boy just hit me with that little nugget of wisdom. And I just needed to hear that at that time. It, it snapped me out of being so overcritical. It snapped me out of acting like he was supposed to be perfect. It snapped me into remembrance. Oh yeah, this is a, this is a baby. And he made a mistake. No big deal. He's still learning. And aren't we all, aren't we all still learning? We are all literally still learning. We are all literally still learning. It's one of the reasons why I, I, I take issue oftentimes when people are are physically, you know, aggressive with their children, hitting them, popping them, this and that. It's like, what if somebody slapped you across the mouth every time you made a mistake or beat, you know, punched you upside your head, bopped you upside your head? Like, it doesn't, we make mistakes all the time as adults. <laughs> we make mistakes all the time as adults. And nobody is there slapping us except for life. <laughs> okay, so that part, we're still learning. We're still learning. That's a big lesson to remember in business. And it takes time. It takes time. It takes time. You're not going to learn everything overnight. Some of the lessons are going to have to be applied. So you're going to have to figure it out through application, right? Because the first time you do it, 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 look, it might look crazy might look crazy but it doesn't mean that you don't need to do it it just means that it takes some time it's gonna take you a little bit of time baby have some patience have some patience with yourself you know and and we don't we don't we're not often fed those stories as much because those stories involve longevity those stories involve dedication those stories involve um a stick to it a stick to itiveness in this <laughs> a consistency, it's not a microwave. Th that's a long haul, right? And it's only like that because when starting business, you don't necessarily have the resources to play the game at the levels that corporations are playing. You don't have those resources. So you working with what you got and what you got is just what you got. That's all, what you got is just what you got. So you are working with that. Okay, and so because you're working with what you have, it's going to take you a little longer, a little bit more dedication, a little bit more consistency to get to that next level, to get where you essentially want to be. Because don't you have high ambitions and high goals? You have high ambitions. You want a lot from life. You want life to give you a lot. So if you want a lot from life, then you got to be able to put up 
some of that energy. Even if the energy is just coming from your beliefs, your thoughts, even if it's just thought energy. Thought energy is one third. It's one third of the energy. So even if you are just putting one third of your energy on what it is that you want and what you're bringing to life, right? Because sometimes when we think of energy we, and we think about investing in business, we really technically think about money. <laughs> We're like, okay, I got to put more into it. Okay, that means more money. But if you're not willing to put more money, if you don't have the currency to put in, then you can put in other things that have that are of high energetic value as well. Like, for example, your attention. Your attention, honey. Your attention is of high value. Your attention is of high value. Like even me right now, I'm paying you attention. That is a high value activity. You are valuable, therefore I pay you attention. I'm paying you attention. I'm investing in your attention. And I'm investing in your attention so that you can reap the benefits of that investment. So that you can increase value in your life, right? Because I'm talking to you about your business. So hopefully you can apply some of these lessons to your life and increase the value of your life, right? So there's just so much and I feel like I'm gonna need to go back and watch this, this live myself just to make sure that um, I'm taking notes on what I'm learning even as I'm teaching. Um, because I'm, I'm just, this is just a conversation. I didn't plan any of this out. I don't have any notes. I don't have any um, bullet points. I just wanna talk to you all about this 10 year journey. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> I just want to talk to you about this journey. Because there's so, it's been 10 years officially. It's officially been 10 years. It's officially been 10 years. And it, it didn't feel like it would go like this. I mean, I was supposed to be sitting right next to Oprah right now. You know, that's technically what it was supposed to be going like. But yet, here we are. She's not here yet, but she's coming. She's on her way. Um, but yet, yeah, it's been 10 years. And there's been so much that I've learned, so much that I have grown from, um, so much that I am willing to share with you. Because at the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey, there were so few people who were willing to keep it real with me. So one of the things that I distinctly remember from the beginning of my journey is putting so much focus on my external appearance versus the um, the the iceberg. So y'all, do you remember that picture of the iceberg? And at the it's like a big ice glacier in the water, right? It's like a little cartoon drawing, and there's a line in the middle of the iceberg. Well, not in the middle, but it's like at the top part of the iceberg, and so you see the top part and then you see the bottom of the iceberg and with this particular picture at the top they have labeled it um money or they'll label label it um you know um what success looks like or you know great relationships they'll, they'll label that at the top of the iceberg right but then you have the line where the water represents and then there's this big piece underneath the water and that'll say like hard work, dedication, consistency, grit, perseverance, application, like not giving up, <laughs> not giving up. Cause there is a lot of te temptation as an entrepreneur to be like, like there's a lot. Cause you feel like the wheel's supposed to be turning a little faster than this. Like, hold on now, I ain't planning to be here for 16 years doing this and, and, and just now getting, you know, to uh to to the to the Emmy Awards. <laughs> you know, I didn't expect to be doing this uh uh eight years and just now be getting to Essence magazine. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that it would take so long. I personally didn't expect it because I felt like, okay, I'm coming in swing, I'm coming in working hard, I'm coming in doing this and doing that. But at the time, 
I was applying a lot of energy to the wrong place. And that's another lesson as an entrepreneur. It don't matter how much you hustling and, and, and working hard and putting in work and doing this and that, if you are putting in that energy in the wrong place. If it's in the wrong place, it ain't gonna make no difference. It's not gonna make any difference if it's in the wrong place. Or it'll make a difference in that area. It'll have that area juiced up, but the other areas will be imbalanced. Imbalanced. So you have to focus on balancing your energy, your attention. Like even right now, you know, this has been my, I think this is my third video. Um, I've been making a video a week <laughs> for the last few weeks. And I've been consistent. And that has not been my thing, you know, over the last two years, I have been a nomad. I have been traveling through mother Africa. I have been on a healing journey. I have been on a glow up journey. I have been on a ascension journey. I have been um, in an amazing place. Peace and greetings, peace and greetings. So um, I have been in an amazing place for quite some time. And I have not been thinking about no doggone making videos and teaching classes and et cetera, et cetera. I have not been thinking about that. I have not been thinking about that. So you know what happens when I take my eye off of that area? Then that area does not flourish. That area does not grow. That area is not rising up, right? Because just like you are the are the the administrator you are the director you are the captain of your own vessel okay just like you are the captain of your vessel for your own body for your own life you're the captain of your vessel when it comes to business too it's your business that's your baby you got to be focused on it you got to care about it if you don't care why would somebody else care about your business that's your business right that's your business so if you're not putting attention on it and you're saying, oh, you know, that's one of the reasons why in starting this particular agency and starting my life coaching agency, I did not, I, even with my first business, when I started Camp Butterfly Bella, I took the money that I had and started my business. And I did that with intention because in my community, people used to love to talk about, they got all these grants, they have all this free money you know, you can use that to start your business. I didn't want to start my business off of no grants and off of no charity. I was starting my business from my own pocket because I wanted to invest in me at a high level. I don't want to be going behind nobody talking about invest in me, invest in me if I'm not willing to invest the last that I have on myself. That's what it was about for me. That's what it was about for me. So it's important to understand that when you are talking about business and talking about what you offer, but you're not willing to put anything in on it, it doesn't make sense. It's like you advertising yourself as a doctor, you know, or, or advertising doctoral services, you know, y'all really need to go to the doctor, blah, 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 go to the doctor, go get checked out, go to the doctor. But if you're not going to the doctor yourself, then how can you advocate for that? How can I advocate for something that I, I, I don't believe in? I mean, because it's the action over the words. You'll go and spend that $10 somewhere else, but you won't spend that in investing in your own company, in your own agency, and what you got going on. You won't spend, you won't invest that money in you. That's essentially what business is about. Business is about investing in you, investing in those relationships, investing. It's an investment. It's an investment. And the question is, how much are you willing to invest? How much are you willing to invest in you? How much are you willing to invest in your dream and your vision and what you want and where you want to be? Because that's a, that's a really huge question to ask before, before you even start a business, before you even start a business. Asking yourself how much you want to invest in yourself, how much you want to invest in this vision, how much you want to invest in what you see, and how much are you willing to invest in these people that you want to assist? 
because Apple is the type of company that Apple is because they make these people believe that they are invested in them. And I can talk bad about Apple because I have an iPhone. I just got it this year. I just switched from Joy to iPhone and I am not impressed. Not impressed. Okay, so if you're with Team Apple, you can be mad at me. Be mad. I said it. I am not impressed with Apple. As soon as this as soon as this time is up, as soon as I've served my time with Apple, I'm going right back to Joy. There I said it. I'm going right back and getting the brand new, you know, most most upgraded Galaxy because that that Apple is just not that serious. So at any rate, okay, y'all doing pretty good. I don't see nobody cussing me out in the comments. I get cussed out in real life. I get told off in real life when I say anything bad about Apple. They be like, no. But at any rate, Apple is a successful business because Apple made it their point to invest in their customer. They made a long-term commitment to continue to show up for their customer. When they first came out, we remember, um, they had the little Apple products. What did they have? Was it, was it Nintendo? Did Apple own Nintendo, Katora? Huh? Did Apple own Nintendo? I don't know. I think Nintendo was an Apple product. Um, and then they had computers. I remember being in elementary school and having using an Apple computer right so apple had product but the thing about it is that they fell off and they were off for quite some time apple went went off the grid for it felt like 10 15 years that apple wasn't really relevant and so what they had to do was wake up essentially <laughs> apple had to wake up and realize wait a minute we have a customer and this particular customer needs these particular things. They studied their customer. They cared about their customer because they were invested in their customer. It's investment. It's investment. They were invested in their customer. And once they became invested in their customer, really invested in their customer success, really invested in their success because it takes you investing in you first and then you investing in your customer their family their their community their their everything you want to see them thrive at a, at a whole life level for me at least right so once that became the case then now you can see apple is growing now you can see apple is soaring apple is 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 appling apple is doing the thing they are doing the thing from the cell phones to the tablets to the MacBooks, there's a culture around it. You know, one of the biggest things that Apple did that that helps dramatically with sales, with revenue, with marketing, with branding, is the fact that they have the the Apple. Um, it's like a tribe, right? And having the store when you can go in and say this is my problem with my particular device and then someone is there to help you like it's the the tribe and the way that they support their tribe the way that they take care of their people that is why apple is apple so for you as a business owner that is that's simply the lesson are you invested in you and your success your long-term vision and what you have going on for your life okay and if this business is a part of that then are you invested in the people that you were ultimately designed to serve? It's not necessarily being invested in the business itself as much as it is being invested in the business and the people. Once you're invested in the people, then you will upgrade the business, right? Once you're really invested in these people, then you will continue to pour into the business to uplift it. You will improve it. You will update it. It will become better. It will become bigger. Right, because you're invested in the people. It's a whole entire process, and it takes time. That was one of the lessons that we are that I already said. It takes time. I wish somebody had a sat me down very early on in my business and said, "You know what? I see that you are very ambitious, and I see you 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 are going to go far. But I want you to know, baby, it, it's going to take time. <laughs> it is going to take time." It is going to take time. It's not going to happen like that right now, sweetheart. 
You're not going to be on the cover of Forbes right now. Like, you could get there, but it's going to take time. Why did nobody tell me that? Right? I mean, they say it in many different ways, you know, uh, uh, um, longevity, you know, and, and, and it's a marathon, not a race. Just tell me it's going to take time. Stop speaking to me in quotation and tell me if you want to be successful in business, it's just going to take time. That's all. It's going to take time. It doesn't matter how much you do that first year. Do, 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 do it all, baby. Do it all. Do everything that your body allows you to have the capacity to do and then do a little extra, okay? But the thing is, while you're doing it, this is another lesson. While you are doing it, don't let, don't let the, the non-instant failure of it, the non-instant, the non, the, the instant failure of it. Let me just, let me just say, don't let the failure of it discourage you. And that's hard. That is hard. It's very hard to not let something discourage you when you wanted it so badly or when you feel like, feel like you put so much into it when you've invested into it when you you know I I don't put everything in this I do I don't do all of it in when you throw all of it in and then you lose baby baby it don't feel good it don't feel good it don't it's just it doesn't feel good <laughs> that doesn't feel good does it no it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good when that happens um, and when, when that happens, it's important not to take it personal. It's not personal, you know, it just didn't work out at that time. It's not personal. Don't take it. Per That's what Monica said. Don't take it personal, right? Don't take it personal, baby. When things don't work out the way that you intended, don't take it personal, don't, don't, you, you know, don't beat up yourself and now you go to your tally, you know, things that happened that were bad and you make another tally and you're mad about it and it's hard for you to let it go and you feel some type of way and it, it causes a wound. When it, when you're struggling to let stuff like that go, it's just, it's causing a wound. It's causing a nick. And the more you feed that nick, you know, with that fear, I don't want to do it again. Well, why don't you want to do it again? Because it didn't work out the first time. It did not work out for me the first time. So I don't want to do that again. You know, and can I make a reference point real quick? And then I'm going to come back. And I'll remember what I was talking about. So if I don't remember what I was talking about, tell me what I was talking about. Somebody help me out here, okay? So <laughs> I um, am here visiting my mom right now in... Uh, the east side of Atlanta. So I'm not in Atlanta, I'm not in the city. I'm in the east side of the city, right? So I'm here visiting my mom and my daughter was pointing out how every generation in our family, uh, I think she was pointing this out to me or maybe I was pointing that to her. Every generation is single. Every generation of women has been single, right? Well, the last three. So my mom, I'm single. My mom is single. My grandmother is single and my grandmother's grandmother, single. All of these are single women. And, you know, when people ask me, would you get remarried and et cetera, I'm like, meh, you know, like I'm not, I'm not set on it. Like I'm not absolutely against it and check the facial expression, but I'm not like, yes, like, yes, you know, yes, I would get married again. Like I'm not, that's not me, right? I'm. I'm cool, right? Um, and you know, very recently my mom put up a picture in the house and that picture was of her and my father when they got married. And it's such a beautiful picture. It's such, you know, seeing marriage pictures, it can still be very um, emotional, very inspiring, very motivating, you know, very encouraging because seeing beautiful, a beautiful bride, seeing a handsome groom, seeing the family come together, seeing the children. Oh, it feels good. It does feel good. But for me, there's still an element of meh, right? There's still that element. And when I, when I get honest about why that element exists, it's, it's simply because I've already been married, right? And I've done that and it didn't work for me. <laughs> 
it didn't work. It didn't work. It 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 it, 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 it seems like a bit of a failure, you know. It seems like I wasn't successful when it came to that. And because it, it seems that way, it's a little challenging for me to have the motivation to even want to do it again. You see? Like, still hurts a little bit. Still hurts. <laughs> it didn't work. Um, and I didn't even know that I felt that way. Like, I'm, this is the first time I'm really talking through it. And I didn't even know I felt that way. I wasn't really aware that I felt so discouraged. And I can imagine that my mother felt the same. My grandmother, you know, everybody was married before except for my great, great, my great grandmother. But they probably felt the same. When you put all of your energy into something and it does not turn out the way that you were hoping, the way that you were praying, the way that you were expecting. Ah, oh, failure. That's how it feels. Failure. Failure. She's a failure. It, it can feel like that. Can we take a breath on that? Uh, just because something did not work out the way that you want it to does not make you a failure in life, in business, in parenting, in anything. We are still learning. We are still learning. We are still learning. We are still learning. It's part of a process. Growth is part of a process. It's part of a process, and somewhere along the line, we learn these habits. We learn to beat up on each other, on ourselves. We learn to, to say negative things. We learn to think that it's supposed to work the first time. It's supposed to work the first time. So what's going on if it, if it didn't work the first time? That must, that must mean I'm not meant to do it. It must not be meant to be. Could it be possible that you're just learning? Could it be possible that it's not your season? And that's another lesson too. I had to learn that there are seasons for business. There are seasons. There's business seasons. And these corporations, these corporations, they be knowing. They be knowing. Like I remember when I worked at this charity at the charity, they would have giving season. Like, there's a season for people to give. There's actually, like, in philanthropy, there's actually a season for people to give. Like, the fall. <laughs> the fall and then again in the winter, Christmas. But really, the fall is, like, the opening to the season of giving. <sighs> These places. I mean, this is the second year in a row that I'm having my retreat in September. I, I, didn't, I didn't think... I'm gonna have my retreat in September of next year, but here we are, the season. This time period was also when I did my goddess conference. When I did the goddess conference, I did it in the fall. And it could be because of my birthday, like my birthday is coming up next month, so that could be part of the seasonal understanding of, of when to do these things and when is the right time. Um, and yet there is a season when you're operating as a business owner, it's important to know the seasons for your clients. It's important to know the seasons for your customers. You're invested in your customer's success. So if you're invested in children, it's important to know when these children need to be served. You have to know the seasons. When are they going back to school? When is summer camp coming? Or are most of my people parents and they have elementary age kids? Study the profile, study the profile, get to know, get to know the people who you are building a business to serve. Get to know the people that you are building a business to, to assist, to up level, to take care of. And it could be challenging, you know, let's, let's talk through this. This is supposed to be a discussion. What are you all doing? Hello? <laughs> Hello. Y'all are really just tuned in. Like nobody's commenting and saying anything like that don't make no sense. Like y'all are tuned in. All right, give thanks and praise. Give thanks. 
So know the seasons. And what I was going to say um, about understanding who you're serving, it can be challenging. So for you, if you're starting a business, it can be challenging to, um, to understand clients that you don't even have yet. To understand clients that, that don't exist in your business yet right? So let's say you're just starting. How do you analyze people who haven't been your customers? How do you analyze people who haven't yet bought a product from you? How do you analyze people who, how do you get to know people who, who've never shopped in your store before? Right? And, um, part of that is really understanding the nature of your product. That is, is where product research comes in. That's where product research comes in. I know it may not seem like a viable investment when you're first beginning, but after some time, you know, when you are, are selling and you have the people who you're selling to, uh, who are purchasing from you that are there, but you also need to know more so that you can, so that you can meet new audiences, expand. Right in the beginning, we, we, we all think about expansion, whether we're at the beginning stages of business or whether we're at the hundredth year of business, we're all thinking about expansion. We all want to grow our money, grow our revenue, grow our income. We all do, we all do, that's normal, that's natural. So if you are looking to expand and you're like, okay, well, I wanna reach, um, I want to reach a thousand people this year, right? I want to reach a thousand people. I want a thousand people to buy my product, but I don't know who they are yet. I don't have a profile for these people because I've never sold anything to them yet. Then what you have to do is start doing product research to understand more about the product that you created. Because when you understand more about what you created, then you can get very clear on who you created it for who you created it for. Once you create something, the more you study what you can create or study what you created is the more you have an understanding of who exactly you created that for, okay? So I feel like that's probably the 10th lesson <laughs> for, um, for today. It feels like the last one, let me see. Is there anything else on my heart to share? Because this, this is really about my 10 years in business. And I'm pretty sure when I watch this, I'm going to be like, girl, you was dropping nuggets. You was dropping the gems. You was dropping the juice. Like, this is likely going to go into my paid program about business. Yeah, we'll give thanks and praise. So if you're watching this, <laughs> it's, it's likely not on my social media. This is, this is part of my branding business bundle. This is part of my entrepreneur startup pack. Because these are the things that I wish somebody had taught me. These are the things that I wish someone had taught me when I was first going into business. Had I known these things, I could have saved myself time, energy, money, effort. Saved a little juice, saved a little meat. Like, it would have been completely different. So it's a really big deal for me to, um, to assist you in this way, in this capacity, so that you can just start to integrate some of these thoughts Sometimes it's not even about the application of it. Sometimes it's just about being aware. Being aware that this is what exists. Being aware that this is, this is okay, got it. This is what exists, right? And, and, and likely the 11th lesson is really about believing in yourself. And I, I am the least person to talk about believing because baby, I'm action oriented. I'm all about that action. Give me that action. Give me that action, okay? So, believing in yourself. What does that mean? That means that you are not allowing your the, the thoughts that you have about what could go wrong overtake 
your entire existence, that you're not letting your worries, you're not allowing the things that make you uncomfortable to really take over. That would, that would be it. Being comfortable in what you're offering, being comfortable with what you're doing, being comfortable with yourself, being, 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 being. That's a big part of it in business. Not comparing, because that comparing thing, that, that can get you messed up. Don't compare yourself to nobody else. Cause, and they say that. You comparing your year one to somebody's year eight. Oh. Oof. Okay. You can't do that. That's not fair. That's not even, that's just not fair to you. It's not fair to you. It's not fair. Remember what my, my baby said? He said, mommy, I'm still learning. You're still learning. If you're in business year two, you are a toddler. <laughs> you are a toddler in business. I give thanks and praise. Your girl is 10 years old, <laughs> okay? Your girl is 10 years old. 10 years old this year. Really, I'm 11, okay? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm 11. Y'all know kids don't play by their age. They be like, first of all, I'm 11 in eight months. Really, I'm 11 because I started in 2011. Okay, so technically, I'm 11. But I, you know, I happen to be born in a leap year, really. So I'm really, you know, I'm between 10 and 11. I'm really like 11 years old, though. Cut it out. <laughs> Stop comparing yourself. Believe that you can carry your mission all the way. Believe. Know that. Matter of fact, don't even believe it. Know that you can carry your mission all the way. You didn't come into the door to play around. You didn't come into the door to sit up here and pat a cake. You didn't come into the door to, to doubt your own self. The world can do that for you. Other people can do that for you. Other people can doubt you. Other people can throw shade. Other people can rain on your parade. Other people can say what it is that they want to say. But baby, please put all of your eggs in your basket. Have full conviction and belief in you. It's not about what nobody else thinks about you. It is about what you think about you. What do you think about you? Do you think that you can carry out this, this business? Can, do you think that you um, can complete the mission? Do you think that you can carry it forward? Because if there's something telling you that you can't, then that means that you need to go in there and at the beginning, I already said it, do that self-discovery work, self-discovery, self-discovery, self to that. Now we tie the piece all the way back to the, to the beginning. Then we do the self-discovery. Then we learn more about who we are, who we've been over these different stages and how we've been impacted and what caused that belief to be there, who put that there or what experience put that there. What experience put that there? I had a different topic in mind before I came today. The topic that I had in mind before I came was um, about repeating your cycles. It was about repeating your cycles in, in life. Like everyone has a, a challenge and ultimately we spend our lives rotating around that challenge. That's how we spend our lives. So I think I'm gonna do a separate class for that and I'm gonna likely do it next week. Um, next week is looking like the last week in this particular weekly series. And I'm so excited that you have showed up. I show up on Tuesdays. And today I am showing up on Facebook and on Instagram. <laughs> On Instagram, my name is at Goddess Queen Ja Ost. And on Facebook is um, Goddess Queen Ja Ost. It's just separate. <laughs> so you can follow me. You can add me. Um, you can download my book, which is available on Audible. It is called Goddess Awakening. 
and it is on Audible, and it chronicles the story of my awakening journey, my spiritual journey, and, and how I have come to life and come into existence as Goddess Queen Jah Ast. And um, I'm going to be having a book signing next Friday, July 29th in Atlanta. So if you would like to come to that book signing, then by all means, send a message to us, drop a comment, uh, get in touch with us and just let us know that you want to come. Um, in order for you to enter, you have to buy a copy, a physical copy of that book. And that is your, your entry fee. So you can just buy that and come on in. Um, we are happy to welcome you. Give thanks and praise. Thank you, brother. So there's a comment from high school. Your light always shined bright, family. That's very sweet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So because there's no questions and there's no, like this has been a question-free <laughs> live and that's the first time I've done that because usually people are always like what and this and that and commenting and blah 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 y'all have been tuned in and listening so we 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 honor that we honor that we honor that all right so give thanks I appreciate you I appreciate uh having you on today I have enjoyed this particular workshop which is on um what I've learned being in business for 10 years and I will see you next Tuesday Right. I will see you next Tuesday um, for what looks like it, it will be the final <laughs> the final capture for my my live videos for this time period. All right. Goddess Queen Jaas here. Peace.